Hey guys, Ethan from Tagmonts here, and this is our Word of Tanks Stug 3. The guys over at World of Tanks reached out and asked us to build a replica Stug 3 as a computer. Alongside a Zeus and Cooler Master, we made it happen. It was all built for Oz Armor Fest in Brisbane to raise money for the guys up there who are actually building a Stug 3 in real life. Let's jump into how I made it. Powering the tank, we had the Z590i from Zeus, the 11700 CPU from Intel, 32 gig of Kingston HyperX RAM, as well as a 1 terabyte M.2 SSD, and the Zeus 3080 Ti Tough. GPU. From Cooler Master, we've got the ML120R CPU cooler, the V850 SFX power supply, and some MF120 Halo fans. The biggest challenge for this build was faced before we actually started building the PC, and that was figuring out the scale and dimensions for each and every piece of the Stug on Illustrator first. Once we had that sorted, we jumped on the laser cutter and cut out a whole bunch of the pieces out of 9mm MDF. A couple of pieces were too long, so rather than cutting them down on the laser again, I just zipped them through the table saw. Gluing the pieces together was done with just standard old wood glue, and then every piece was held in place with staples while the glue dried. A spare motherboard was used to template exactly where the motherboard holes needed to go, and then they were pilot drilled in, and the standoffs were screwed in. And that finishes off the generic shape for the bottom section of the tank. The tank will actually come apart so that the hardware can be accessed from the inside. So this bottom shell here is, will be what holds the hardware, and the top with the turret will be a completely separate piece. We start work on the top just as we did with the bottom section. We laser cut the pieces out of 9mm MBF. This piece, however, required a taper, so we head over to the oscillating belt sander just to bring down the front edge until it's nice and thin. I then sand all the pieces up to 240 grit so they're nice and smooth. I also go along the bottom section with bog and fill in all the cracks and holes. I begin assembling the top half of the tank in the exact same way we did the bottom. I leave the two larger pieces separate so that they can be firmly attached to the bottom once the top turret assembly is built. We head back to the laser and use 3mm MDF to cut a whole bunch of the finer details, including the air box and the armor carry boxes on the side of the turret. I use CA glue with an activator to glue all the pieces together. The top is both sanded and gap filled just like the bottom before attaching the two larger bottom pieces from underneath. Everything's then hit with a coat of primer. This will highlight any little imperfections that we can correct later.
We then come back in with yet more sanding to correct all of those little imperfections. We gap fill in that where needed. I use magnetic kitchen latches to attach the top and bottom pieces together so the top of the tank will snap and latch into position. I also reinforce that with little 90 degree brackets that can be screwed in from the outside of the bottom. That will allow us to lock in the two pieces. So once those screws are removed, you, the magnet latches can then release, but whilst the screws are in place, they hold the pieces together so the tank can't fall apart during shipping and things like that. We head back over to the laser again to start cutting our tracks. Our tracks are eight pieces of 6mm MDF all layered together. That allowed me to keep a lot of the track detail since these tracks aren't required to move. I use a paint roller with wood glue to layer up all of the MDF until we have all eight layers together for our tracks. I prop the base of the tank up and use wood screws to attach the tracks. To make the barrel I use a piece of 16mm steel tube and that slides into a 20mm piece of conduit which slides onto a 20mm conduit coupler and then cut at the right lengths gives us our barrel. We had some quite large gaps after attaching the small angled armour plates to the side of the turret. So I mixed wood glue with MDF dust to build a paste to fill those holes. The front around the turret was super finicky to get together so I didn't end up filming most of it. But with it all on I had to then bog and sand just like the rest of it. The toe points in the front of the tank were made with little metal latch loops and a D-shackle. It's time to mount a bunch of the smaller details such as the front lights, the light bullet protectors, the front air intake, the speaker and the rear lights. The Stug has a whole heap of hatches with external hinges. So I just use micro door hinges for those, round it off the corners on the belt sander and attach them. And with that, our stug's ready to paint. I lay down a couple more coats of primer before coming in with four coats of the sandbark. With the sandbark base done, the tracks had to be hand painted to be finished off, so I did the black for the rubber around the rims and also a black base on the tracks and then I come in with a nice lead vulture warhammer silver for the rest of the track.
With the build being nearly done, I was pretty concerned about heat and airflow. So I dropped the laser all the way down, put the bottom of the tank on, and laser cut a second fan hole so it would have a second intake. That's the tank pretty much built, so I had to prep the motherboard, get the SSD installed, our CPU and our RAM. Get that fitted inside the tank, followed by our GPU. The all-in-one cooler was a little tricky to fit since it was mounted in the top, so it was just a matter of balancing the two units. Just need to refit our tracks so the tank props back up. Luckily we have our holes from earlier, so it's just a matter of lining them back up. I also hit a power button in the bottom of the barrel and made a couple of special world of tank keys to get the PC going. Let's get into the reveal.